Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. Welcome to You Make the Call. It's the February 2025 edition. And what I did in this that's a bit unusual is I've been working a lot on mediastinal masses. And so everything is kind of going to focus on the chest, specifically the mediastinum. Patient with a cough. Now, the patient was about 10. So the first thing you look at is that an anterior mediastinal mass? Well, in a 10-year-old, that's a prominent but actually normal thymus gland. So that's the first thing. Remember, thymuses can vary in size, but under age 21, 22, they're typically large, and especially in children. What you then do see is nodes in the pretracheal space, nodes in the uh, posterior mediastinum, there's compression and narrowing around the patient's uh, trachea and main stem bronchi. And I have to admit, you'd be thinking all said that this could be lymphoma. I would think of that, but you also need to think about the possibility of inflammatory disease, particularly in a young patient. But again, we always think about malignancies just because it looks so impressive. Well, this patient was worked up further and again, concern for the possibility of lymphoma was definitely there. The rest of the scans, the abdomen, the pelvis, the lung fields looked okay. The patient had a cough. The patient was worked up further. And this was not a malignancy, fortunately. And look how bulky the nodes are. The nodes are in part calcified. Calcified nodes, you really are more likely thinking about inflammatory disease, infectious disease, TB, histoplasmosis, something like that, MAI. Here you can see the large subcarinal nodes with calcification. And this ended up being histoplasmosis with a normal thymus gland. So two things to take away from this case. One, how prominent the thymus can look. And two, how even in children you could pick up things like histoplasmosis and it really is a difficult case because it would be very easy to say this was lymphoma or perhaps a different malignancy, but lymphoma would have been my best guess. Question mediastinal mass. Well, this really depends on how old the patient is. If the patient's under 20 or surely maybe even under 25, there's a triangular mass in the anterior mediastinum, which looks like the thymus. And if it's under 25, it's a normal thymus. If it's over 25, then I'm going to say it's still thymus, but it looks like thymic hyperplasia because it's triangular in shape. When you have thymic masses, whether it's thymic carcinomas or thymomas, they tend to be bulky and lobular and solid. This is low density. And when you work this patient up, there it is again, nicely shown, the thymus, but it was thymic hyperplasia. And thymic hyperplasia can be due to a number of things. It can be a rebound phenomena in patients who've been on chemotherapy, for example, or patients with stress. It's interesting because in a patient who's being treated for lymphoma, for example, you would worry it's recurrence, but we know and you have to become good at recognizing it. But in this case, it was interesting. The patient had thymic hyperplasia, and they did a brain MR in this patient, and there was a pituitary mass. And so what you were dealing with was a pituitary mass, increasing growth hormone production, causing simulation of the thymus and thymic hyperplasia. What a great case. What about this case? There's a cystic lesion eccentric. First thing I think about is thymus. Could it be a thymoma? They can be cystic in part, cystic and solid. It'd be unusual to have it just cystic. It's not a good location for a bronchogenic cyst or a pericardial cyst that you would follow it down with because sometimes pericardial cysts can go really high up, so it can be confusing. Um, could it be a teratoma? They can be cystic but usually have fat and they're vascular as well and maybe calcification. This was, when you think about it some more, with a thymic cyst. There's lots of articles talking about the difficulty of thymic lesions. Cysts from tumors. We showed a case previously of hyperplasia. But this, we don't worry about hyperplasia. This is a mass. But thymic cysts can be large, can have minimal compression of the parenchyma, 
and it can be a challenging diagnosis. And here's just a few more images showing that. The patient has an anterior metastinal mass, and there's something on the pleura. Compared to the cases I've shown you of thymic cysts or hyperplasia, this is solid mass. You could think about lymphoma, perhaps. You could think about metastasis, but I got to think about thymoma. And the process that's involving the pleura, malignant thymoma, because thymoma extends down along the pulmonary arteries, extends into and along the mediastinum, but also extends to the pleural surface. So here is involvement of the pleural surface in a patient with a malignant thymoma. And once you see the pleural involvement, you know it's an aggressive tumor. So just a really nice example of a thymoma with involvement of the pleural surface. This patient has chest pain. You see an anterior metastinal mass with calcification. I will admit you could think about a teratoma because of the calcification. It's not vascular. You could think about a thymoma, though rarely do they calcify, but they can. Thymic carcinomas can calcify. Thymic carcinoids can calcify. It's not going to be lymphoma. Lymphoma calcifies when treated. So I got to be thinking, I got to stay with something in the thymic category. And this patient with chest pain, you can see the mass very nicely as we go through looking at the sagittal views. It pushes on the vessel, but doesn't invade the vessel. And this was an epithelial neoplasm of the thymus. So again, thymic masses, I think of thymoma first. That's most frequently. But thymic carcinomas, thymic neuroendocrine tumors are all possibilities, particularly if there's calcification. This patient has an anterior mediastinal mass, but what you see, it's eccentric, so that makes you think of thymoma, but you see fat and calcification. When I see fat, when I see calcification, I'm thinking about a teratoma. You're not going to see fat in a thymoma. You can see calcification. I've showed you cases like that already. But when you put all this together, to me, this is a teratoma. And just a really nice example of teratoma, with a large mass, eccentric, fat, and calcification. A very nice example. This patient has chest pain and there's a mass in the anterior metastinum. I have to admit, you might try to walk by that mass and say, well, it's some nodes, but are those nodes significant? This is above two and a half centimeters. I have to worry, it could be a thymoma, it could be lymphoma, it could be metastasis if the patient had a primary. It's not going to be a parathyroid adenoma. It's not substernal thyroid. This patient needs to be worked up further. When the patient is worked up, the patient has a PET scan. This area is very hot. Interestingly, it's the only area with increased PET uptake. And you can see that very nicely here. And this was in the category of lymphoma. This was a B-cell lymphoma. So usually we think of bulkier masses when we think of lymphoma. But here's a case with a very early presentation. The chest pain may have been coincidental. And maybe the patient was just lucky. They had chest pain for another reason, which went away. And then we found this lymphoma, which was successfully treated. Patient with chest pain, large anterior metastinal mass, eccentric, extending down along the left chest wall and pleura. It's very large. When you see large masses like this, lymphoma is a possibility. This is not a teratoma, right? They can be large, but they have calcification and fat. You've got to be thinking about a thymoma. But again, when it gets really large and now you have more images, you can see it's eccentric and really tracks downward. This is going to be lymphoma and was a nice example of Hodgkin's lymphoma. This patient has chest pain. There's an anterior metastinal mass. But when you look at the epicenter, you have to say, is this arising from the anterior metastinum growing through the chest wall? Maybe it's a sarcoma, strange sarcoma. Maybe it's a thymoma maybe thymic uh, carcinoma. 
Well, this mass actually began in the patient's chest wall. This patient had lymphoma way back when, more than 17 years ago, was treated with radiation therapy. This ends up on biopsy being a chondrosarcoma with extension and recurrence because of uh, the patient's prior radiation therapy. Just a really, really interesting case. We've seen uh, osteosarcoma. We've seen chondrosarcomas in the anterior mediastinum in patients who've had radiation for things like lymphoma or other tumors. So a very unusual case. Here it is nicely on the sagittal view where you can see the extension from anterior mediastinum into the posterior mediastinum uh, and through the chest wall. So just a really, really nice example. This is, I would put this in the mediastinum anterior category, but what you have here is motor vehicle accident. What you're seeing is blood in the anterior and posterior and middle mediastinum. When you look at the aorta, you can see a flap. This patient was very lucky. They survived. They made it to the ER and got a scan. Often these patients will die before they make it to the hospital. But it's a really nice example of what looks like a mediastinal mass if you got a chest x-ray, but it's a widened mediastinum due to aortic injury with active bleeding. Just a really nice case and a surgical emergency. Here it is nicely on the sagittal views. Look at the ductus zone area. You can see the flaps, the tear, but the patient is very lucky. There's a large hematoma in the mediastinum and along the aorta, but there's no active extravasation at this point. If the patient kept bleeding, the patient would have died. The blood that's around the aorta is probably causing tapenade, so the patient is hanging in there and hanged or hung in there long enough to get successful surgery. Well, those are the cases, and I hope you liked them. I hope you learned something, and I hope you have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.